channel. I'm Brooke. I'm Kimberly. And today is March 14th and we're coming to you from Haymarket, Virginia and it's episode 9. And we are a primarily knitting podcast. However, we would say all crafts, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, crochet, knitting, anything fiber related and non-fiber related, quite frankly. I mean, yeah. we're a craft lovers mm -hmm. um, podcast. All right. And we also wanted to say um, welcome to new viewers. Uh, and I hope that you're going to enjoy this episode or you've enjoyed previous episodes that you probably binge watched maybe. Um, and also I wanted to say welcome back to our recurring viewers, and thanks for coming back. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> like... <laughs> you can find us on Instagram under Sweet Pea and Chickadee, and you can find me on Ravelry at K Armini, just my first initial last name. We also now have an email address, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and drop us a note. It's just Sweet Pea and Chickadee at Yahoo.com. Super easy. <laughs> Things have been happening in this household, okay? Mom, what have you got recently? Um, I made a slight purchase and a slight bought purchase. a Peloton bike. Oh my gosh. Um, so I thought I might like it, but I've never cycled or done any, any indoor cycling before. And I thought I might like it, and I got it, and now I'm, like, obsessed. I'm one of those Peloton mm -hmm. people where I try not to talk about it too much with people outside my family because I don't want to be one of those crazy Peloton people, but... I am one of those crazy, I just love, it's so fun. I don't even, it's just so fun. And I don't know. I ride every day. Yeah, I think it. I just, send them texts. I'm going for a ride. No, she didn't say I'm going for a ride. She said I'm going for it. And then she does the bike emoji. <laughs> what? It's fun. I didn't know what you meant by that. Also, are you going for like a walk? Or are you going for like, I, so I was just going to the ride. basement for a ride. It's just, it's so fun. And, I'm, and I have like friends and colleagues and family that like ride too. And it's just fun being able to, I don't know, I have something to talk about. I think about. you like look like you feel better afterwards after you do one. I do. And I, and also it, it's very low impact for me. So we have a rowing machine as well, but the rowing machine really hurt my back. And so I'm like, I need to get in way better shape before I even use the rowing machine mm -hmm. because it just, it really hurt my back. And this bike is so low impact. My back does not hurt even a little bit afterwards. If I feel really good, really rejuvenated. I feel good about myself. It's very, and it's very positive. The classes are very positive and the instructors are very fun and motivational and positive. It's just, it's a good time. I don't, mm -hmm. I really like it. I mean, I wouldn't know, but I am getting the <laughs> shoes for it soon. So I will be on there. So I'll, I'll have to say. That's right. So when I first that. got it, I was like, she wanted to see if it was even going to be. Well, cause the shoes are quite expensive. They're like $125 for the Peloton shoes. You can get other shoes that are similar, but they're all right around $100 because you have to clip in, for those of you who don't know. You have to clip into your pedals so you can't escape. <laughs> but you have to finish that ride. Yeah, so I ordered my shoes with the bike, obviously. I didn't want to buy everybody in the family a pair of shoes and like nobody else ride it. That's like a waste of money. Mm -hmm. So now I think my awesome, contagious <laughs> excitement <laughs> is rubbing off on Brooke, and I'm gonna get her, too bad we all didn't all wear the same size, wouldn't that be nice, but we don't. We all wear different sizes. We're all tall and different genders, <laughs> and so. Different size feet. I was hoping mm -hmm. you and your brother, you're getting closer to Dale and I'm size. never getting there. <laughs> I was like, maybe you guys can share, but He's no, probably taller not. now, so maybe he's, maybe he's a, whatever he is, 14. He's already a 13. Maybe Brooke wears a size 12 women's. Actually, what are the size cleats? Brooke got new lacrosse cleats and men's, and you got size what? Uh, 12, actually. 12 men's lacrosse cleats. Yeah, man. <laughs> and also, something is coming up for my dad and my mom. And what's that, mom? We're having our anniversary dinner celebration. It's so exciting. We're going to go to the Good Stone Inn. If you don't know where that is around here in Virginia, you should look it up. Oh, my gosh. They have amazing food, and we, like, booked this, like, two months ago when they finally were able to clear that they were going to have a limited seating. We went ahead and definitely reserved our spot. We, I think we went here first like two or three years ago. Um, and we usually do something really nice and fancy dinner for our anniversary dinner, but obviously we didn't go last year, pandemic. Um, so we're really excited. We'll have been married, how, do you know how long, Brooke? 19. 19 years, guys. That's more, it's almost, wait, hold on. That's you've been, like. You've been dating dad for more years. Because we've been dating for 20 years. But I met him, yeah, when I was 20. <gasps> That's weird. <laughs> That's so weird. So half my life, I've been with your dad. That's crazy. 19 years, married. I feel, it sounds like, I, it sounds like I should be really old, but I'm not. I don't feel like I am. Especially now that I have a Peloton bike. <laughs> All right, we should we go right into uh, Bose? Peloton bike. <laughs> 
Alright, all right, guys, we are going to foes. Finished objects. Can we, have like, can we have like a sparkly? <laughs> Brooke's learning her lingo, guys. First it was whips, now it's foes. I'm so proud. If you're a new viewer, uh, Brooke does not knit. So um, she's basically my comedic entertainment, my helper, my sidekick, battle buddy, something like that. Yeah, battle buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be the Robin to your Batman. <laughs> Okay, so first up, finished objects. I have one. I almost thought I had none because I feel like it's been so long since I podcasted, mm -hmm. but I, I finished this, like, the day that I was show, like, our podcast aired because I we recorded a couple days before. Yeah. I finished it already, so it's been a while since I've had it, but I finished my Musselberg. Oh, my goodness, guys. Brooke, do you want to show it up? This is the Musselberg hat by Soul de Teak. Isn't that awesome? The yarn is Amplifiber yarn in her Sweet Dreams colorway. It is awesome. So I norm I I've worn this so much, mm -hmm. right? I I was wearing it in because we like had a cold snap and our house was cold. I was wearing house. this in the house. It was so warm. Um, I thought I would wear it normally like slouchy like mm -hmm. this, but actually I'm wearing it with the turned yeah. up brim. It's quite cozy that way. And Brooke, do you want to do the magic? You guys want to see what the Musselberg hat I love does? This part. Because it's, it's, it takes oh. a minute for me to put back together, so we'll save it until the very end. So what you do is okay, you so are knitting the best part. A tube. Get a show. Lip, where is it? Whoop! Woo! That's what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> oh. So you're starting on one end, a little tiny point, you increase, Pose. knit a tube, very mm -hmm. nice, and then you decrease down into another top of a hat, and then you fold it within itself. So you basically turn fingering weight yarn hat into four, two to four layers. If you wear it as a slouchy hat, it's two layers. If you wear it as a turned up brim, it's like four layers covering your ears. It's so warm and cozy. And I use every bit, I'm going to include a picture right here. You can see how much yarn I had left over. I wanted to use the whole skein, so I didn't really keep track of my measurements. Um, I basically did the increases, weighed it, weighed to see how much yarn I used, which was nine grams. I knit until I had 10 grams left. So I wanted a little mm -hmm. bit of a safety. Yeah. And then I finished it off and I basically had, it looks like approximately one gram left. So it worked out perfect. And I'll probably use that one gram for my scrap, like my uh, magic knot ball that I'm making for like scrappy socks or something because this yarn it's is so pretty. so pretty. Amplifiber yarn is amazing. I actually got more acquisitions. I'll show you during acquisitions. Um, our 15% off code still works for Sweet Pea and Chickadee. It is Sweet Chick 15. Honestly, I think for Amplifiber is um, like one of my favorite people to buy from. She's I so love nice. her yarn. She's so, and her yarn is amazing. Um, you get 15% off through the month of March. If you guys hear bells, <laughs> those are our cats. Sorry, if we like put them out, the dogs are outside of the room, but if we put the cats out, they're going to try to get back in, basically. And they can open doors, so. The, uh, yeah. Our cats. <laughs> um, and I just love her yarn anyway. So through the end of March, and then she did tell me that she thinks that she's possibly going to have another update before the end of March, which is crazy. She just had an update last week. I mean, she's mm -hmm. just a working machine. So Seriously. Really looking forward to that, and I'll show you what else I got from um, Amplifiber. Anyways, my Musselberg hat is amazing. I already want to cast another one on. I'm kind of trying to finish up some other things, and I had some baby item requests that I was finishing up. But I, this is so soothing to knit. I definitely want to cast one on. I can use a whole skein of yarn. And these are great gifts because, I mean, slouchy hats are in season for boys and girls. Mm -hmm. And they can even, like, fold it up if they really want to. It's, like, so many different versions. And it's amazing. I've even seen scrappy versions, guys, if you go on Ravelry and look under their project pages or something like that, where they, like, use their, all these different scraps all the way down. And then, basically, because you can fold it whichever way you want. Like, I can fold it with this out or this side out. You get two different hats for this. Like you have one hat, and no like no matter which way you fold it, you have two different colors you're seeing. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. I'm like, that's a really good idea too. So, next up um, are Damon socks. Technically, these are like a half finished object, so it's gonna segue right into whips as well because mm -hmm. I'm still working. But I finished one. Brooke, do you want to show? This is just a straight stockinette with a fish lips kiss heel and a rounded wedge heel. toe. With two by two ribbing. I um, how big these are. I know, so you can see. These are the same sock blockers I use when I show my socks. They barely. He's got size 
what's the how what size feet? I don't even know. Fifteen. Fifteen. Fifteen feet. And then I made these kind of long so I could make them long because the yarn I got was basically a super sock nato from ancient arts and it's a like a skein and a half so it's 150 grams so i have tons mm -hmm. of um like yeah i'm working off the second sock brooke do you want to show up close to the colorway so that's ancient arts yarn and that is in the a road less traveled colorway i really like it I like speckly it. reds and all the different colors. It's definitely dad style. You can see I have all of my rows marked. So I'm doing, as I'm doing my second sock, I will move these over and then put them on this sock. Here is my second sock going into my whips. Already just finished, barely, basically just barely finished the cuff. <laughs> yes. <For> my cat. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm really excited. So actually I finished this and I was like, okay. And I was doing other things. I'm like, I have to cast, if I cast on the second sock, I know I'll work on it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't work on it for like a week. Cause I was like, um, I finished these finally. Now these, this is like a heavy fingering. So I only cast on 64 stitches. Normally it would probably be 72, but I cast it on 72 and it was huge. Um, the only difference I did between my normal socks, I did a one and a half US one and a half um, needle. Um, but I'm going to show you in comparison because I have another sock whip that these are just a lot larger for being the same stitch count. You'll see. But it's a heavy fingering, so just know that when you're going to gauge your socks, just know it's going to be a little bit bigger. So just, I would go down a size when you're making with Ancient Yards, the Super Sock Nato. It's awesome and super plush. Damon, my husband, is really excited mm -hmm. about it because he loves plushy socks. It's not super plush, but like, you know, got some cushion in it. He's going to love that. See, his socks can be like my leg warmers. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, I have my March DVD socks, uh, Desert Vista Dye Works Sock Club. It's more like a knit along kind of thing. Um, Desert Vista Dye Works, if you knit a sock, pair of socks, every month in their yarn, you, um, and during the same month, you start it and finish it in the same month, you earn like percents off. Like after this month, if I finish it, I'll get 30% off my next order. Then after six months, we get a free skein of yarn. And then after, a year we get a specialty a free skein of yarn in a specialty color right only made for us so that's really cool nice. it's my first year doing it i really like her yarn anyway so i'm really excited about it so this month for march which is actually kind of an acquisition because it just arrived this month so i'll show you the rest of the ones i got too but this is my march colorway sock i'm doing that is national emo day by Desert Vista Dye Works. I just love those colors. It's like super grays, white, and then like bam, some color. I love it. I love this. I know. And then um, I'm just doing it in a just straight vanilla sock and neck because stripes knit themselves. I mean, why even bother? <laughs> um, I did my two by two rib cuff, <laughs> 64 stitches cast on. I use nine inch circulars. I'm going to do, you can see all my markings of my. Um, my stitch markers or progress keepers or whatever these are. Um, I marked my heel already. That's right here because I'm going to do an afterthought heel. I love that one for stripes to do an afterthought heel to have the bullseye effect. Um, Especially for this pattern. I think that'd be like this, that's the pattern with this yarn. Yeah, that will be really cool. Yeah. Um, and also I've done, so I've already marked the heel right here. So I'm about halfway, a little less than halfway down with the foot. I need to get my like booty moving though because it's March 14th and I'm usually like already have finished one by now but I didn't finish it I didn't start it for a couple days I was doing other things um I still have another sock to make so I need to get on I this think, I think you're going faster than I would if I was knitting a pair I of need to get on this so here's what it looks like all wound up Brooke do you want to show gracias gracias all wound up into a yarn ball <laughs> very pretty technically it's a yarn cake all wound up into a yarn <laughs> cake. And this is also sitting in my Scrappy Angel peekaboo bag. Scrappy one of my Angel. favorites. I love the bright colors back here. And I love that I can see through it. And it totally fits everything I need in here. I, I love, love it. I love Angel. She's so nice. I know. I, I, I always feel better when I'm, buy, when I'm buying something from someone who's nice. And like a small business that's mm -hmm. like Yours really is. nice. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Yes, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm taking it. Put it back in my bag. All right, one thing I want to mention is, I know I mentioned heavy fingering with the Ancient Arts socks, um, the yarn, and then this. So I just want to show you the comparison. So these are both 64 stitches. I mean, 
look at you can probably can't tell the difference really but look that these are both 64 stitches and look how much wider everything is now the, there is a difference I use a size one on this and a one and a half on this so just know that when you're doing gauge so I know like on a normal socks at first I was like I guess it's the same size as me but it's not now I'm looking at my socks normally and these are ways like you know then like smaller gauge wise so I know that if I was ever to make Damon like in the light fingering, it'd be 72 stitches. All right, and now we're gonna be talking about your Sunset Highway sweater. Yay, so I'm pulling something out of, I would say- Timeout corner? No, it's just deep whip. Punishment corner? It's not, it was never a timeout punishment. I started it during pandemic last year and I'm using all stash, which I'm so proud of myself for. Mm -hmm. It's just that you know how it is, things come, you know, Christmas came yeah. and it was just, and I was on Sleeve Island, um, it was just forever, but I finished the sleeve, so now I'm like reinvigorated. So here is my Sunset Highway. Brooke, do you wanna show the sleeve? That's my newly finished sleeve. Isn't it We're beautiful? Sally. It's Sally. Isn't it beautiful? Sally. And here's where I started the next one. So, I finished this. I was kind of like, I was past here and on the cuff, I think maybe last time I showed it or close. This is a super long cuff and I love the long cuff because you can just fold it up. Um, I made a few adjustments obviously only to color work because I'm using stash. So I only have two of the main color, two skeins. Um, so I knew I was going to have to kind of pull wherever I could other colors in. And so this cuff is supposed to be the main color, but I just pulled in the green because I love the green. That's Hedgehog Fibers, I believe. Um, all of these yarns and colorways are listed on Ravelry on my project page. But I just love, and this main color is beautiful. <laughs> it's Rising Tide Fiber Co. I think it's Once Upon a Starfish or something. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Starfish. So it's, I was so excited though. When I finished the sleeve, I was like, yes, sleeve. Oh my gosh, I'm so close to being done. I immediately was like, oh, I have to do another sleeve. <laughs> oh no. So I'm right at the point where I'm starting the color work. So I'm right like up here on this sleeve. I'm right there on this side. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, look at this little cactus stitch marker. That is a whiskers and the stitches, uh, progress keeper stitch marker. It's so cute and so light. And so light. And I can make her theme song. Like a song. I can make her theme song for her. Oh my goodness. And Sally, give me some. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, you like made me lose. <laughs> I'm just like, what's happening? <laughs> So I, I think I started this like last spring, maybe summer. I think it was spring. I mean, for last winter. So um, hopefully I can finish it for next winter. 21, 22, 2021, 2022. It's not going to be 2022 anytime soon. Well, I, this is, this should have been done already. We're stuck. I've on. got friends that finish sweaters in like two or three weeks. Hashtag Lorelei. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, this has just been, and it's only because I love doing so many things. It's really what it is. And I love color work. And so when I was just doing the cuff, I was like, cuff, ribbing, ribbing, ribbing forever. But then um, I'm like, yeah, color work again. More of the fun part. And then when I get done with that, I'm gonna use the rest of what I, so I stopped to do the sleeves because I wanted to make sure I had enough main color to do the little bits of main color I wanted. Cause all of this was one skein. So I'm already on the last skein. So I need to make sure I have enough of the main color that I want for my sleeves. And then I'm gonna use whatever I have left over to finish off the body. Then I'm assuming I'm gonna need so I'll have a bottom ribbing. Um, if I don't have enough for main color, I will just pull one of the other colors in here. That's what I'm gonna mm -hmm. do. Basically, I love, that's why I love color work sweaters. You can basically do whatever you want and use whatever yarn colors you want. You don't have to follow the rules and you can still make them cool. Yeah. And then I have been working, actually I had quite a, I had quite a bit of foes I didn't mention, but I can't mention because I don't know who, exactly who watches this. And I know they were like gifts that were asked for me to make for gifts for somebody else. And so I don't want to show them. I took, I tried to take really good pictures. So by, I would say by next podcast, they should ever see the gifts. I'll mm -hmm. be able to show all the pictures up, but there's some really cute things yeah. I made. So I made quite a bit, which is why I didn't make as much progress on my other stuff. But now I'm finished those, mailed them off. I am so excited to like get busy on my stuff yeah. and finish up some stuff because my yarn intake, it does not match my productivity out of my okay. of my foes. My Number acquisitions do not match my 
That was a very oh. complex way to say it. <laughs> I need to basically up my game and speed it up. Get my yes. get my hands moving. That's yes. all I gotta say. Yep. Um, the next whip is a cross stitch. Now, you guys, I messed up. Let's just be real. I messed up, we and knew, we knew it was gonna happen. I'm basically debate. I messed up. And then I didn't check it because I don't normally triple check everything because, you know, you know, I'm doing something in cross stitch. It's kind of a pain. So I messed up and it, it's, I could take it out easily. I just don't know if I want to, <laughs> quite frankly. Watch out for this. Um, so here is hot mess. I'm doing the H. So the top of this H is supposed to line up with the top of the T. That's where I messed up. So I started going down and I realized that I was not going to, it was going to hit the O when it doesn't hit the O in the picture. I'll show you the picture. That's the picture. See? See the difference there? So it's not that much to take out, but it's just like, oh, I don't want to take it out. And I as long if I can make it look nice, I don't it doesn't have to be just like the pattern. It's pattern. my thing. So I'm basically I had and then of course I haven't reached for it or started it again because I haven't decided if I want to fix it or not. Mm -hmm. So either I'm gonna take it all out and start over again, or I'm gonna try and kind of adjust this to you kind can, of match. Yeah, uh, that's what I was thinking. Like you could like go like down and do like a little swirl. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be cool. Mm -hmm. Good job, Brooke. I can do that. I like, come down a little bit and then swirly a little bit. I don't know, do something a little bit different. I have plenty of thread. Like this kit came with plenty of thread. And then I can do the flowers underneath. I'm really excited for that. So it's gonna look mm -hmm. like this. And it's gonna be in our background. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, it's really cool. I'm looking forward to it, but, and I was actually doing it a lot when, because I was, my wrists and thumb were kind of hurting a lot mm -hmm. from knitting, so I was kind of taking it. <laughs> I say I was taking a break. They, <laughs> they didn't think I was taking a break. Oh, well, for mom taking a break, you know how she, <laughs> you know how she knits like 12 hours a day? She, she went down to 11 hours a day. I was not. And it was really, so I was trying to do things that were like, not the same motion. Mm -hmm. And it, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. anyways. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my favorite part, acquisitions. Um, it should, I mean, it's my favorite, but I really need to, like, no. not have as many. Because, like, well, if it involves me, then you should. But of course. Which, <laughs> our first acquisition, which is not fiber, but it is craft, look at our earrings. So these come from, actually, my cousin, um, Chantel from Noel Creative. Look at these. Oh I mean. God. I am literally, I love my, I, these are my mom. These are mom's. But I put them on, and I was like, Mom, these were made for me. And I'm like, no, those are mine. <laughs> so we'll have to, she's like, can we order another pair? I'm like, we just got this set in. Thanks, Chantel. Um, so actually, Brooks that she picked out are this colorway. It's like got gold fixtures, and it's got like gold metallic on it, and it's white and black. And her, But hers are closer to this shape. Yeah, it just has like another, like, it has yeah. like another one of these, just like below. You guys know, you've seen this all before. And I got those because these are like a gold sparkly in it, you can't even see. Oh my goodness. I'll input pictures here so you guys can see the like I the literally, sparkliness. I, I love I love them. I literally love them and I need more pronto ASAP. Brooke put them on, she's like, Oh my gosh, I love these. I'm like, whoa, those are mine. I was like, <laughs> Mom, I feel so confident right now with I my banging think... earrings. And so these are like the polymer clay, I believe, but they're so light. They like are I light. was kinda worried that these would be heavy because I don't like it's anything too heavy on my ears or on my ears, but yeah, I don't my really ears start hurting. Yeah, I don't really wear them that often. But they're so light. Mm -hmm. Really nice. And they're so well made. I really like them. So go check it out. I'll link her below. She's got a um, she's on Etsy, but she's also got an Instagram account. So Noel Creative, go check her out. Next up are my Desert Vesta Dye Works. Um, so I ordered these what New Year's Eve. So it was really funny because I was like, when an order came, I was like, I don't really remember. I remembered I got National Emo Day, but I couldn't remember the other ones I ordered because it had been so long. Mm -hmm. So here are the ones I ordered. Brooke, do you want to show the first one? This one is Zombodies Driving a School Bus. It'll have like a black stripe, a yellow stripe, and then like a couple different speckly stripes. It's gonna be really cool. And this one is, uh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, I can't read cursive, huh? Oh, do you wanna read that? Um, <laughs> I forgot. Ray, it's a, Ray, it's a Ray, Icelandic. Ray Rikjevic? Rikjevic. Yep. Rikjevic? That was my idea. I, it sounds Rik, like... Rikjevic, guys. I, I think... I think that's how you say it. If it's not, I'm sorry. So, it's... Exclusive. Whatever. So show the colorway. So this one, when I first opened it up, I was like, I don't remember this one. In the pictures, that orange 
looked more like pink. It was very pink in the pictures. So I don't know if mine's just different or if it was actually supposed to be pink and or I think it, orange. It's like, a, it's like a peach. Because normally I do not order anything with orange. I'm anti-orange. <laughs> I think it's like a, it's a hair thing. My, my red hair. I can't wear orange. But I'm like, actually, it'll look, it'll be nice. So these will be in their socks. Tell me, come on. Yeah. But I like this gold stripe mixed with everything else. But it's really pretty. I like this. These are all both obviously self-striping, and this will be one of my future months. I don't know. I'm thinking probably next month for April. I'm gonna probably mm -hmm. knit these ones. I think that's. I think so. Yep. Okay, so I hit up Lollipop Yarns um, St. Patrick's Day update because I saw some colorways like this one. Look, this is how all of her. I just love how they're, they're how cute. How they come, and they come with the coordinating mini Lollipop yarn. I mean, so if you want to ever order Lollipop yarn, you have to get there on her update like right away. That's just how. That's how you're gonna get it. If not, she does leave um, pre-orders in for a limited time. But I mean, she hands white. She hand winds these balls. I mean, you oh, can only do so much. I just love how, these are just honestly. I would if I. I'll just buy one just to have literally just on like my mm -hmm. desk or something. They're really pretty. Just because they of come how just like pretty this. this is. So he, this one, this set was Blarney. Brooke, do you want to hold it up? It's got like different color green stripes and that white speckly stripe. I love that one. And then the coordinating mini is the dark green that goes with it. So like that's the dark green color in it. It's very pretty. And I love that her little tags that come with it. So this is Lollipop Yarn. The little tags say the colorway name, but also the colors of each of the stripes. Like they all have their own names. So and it tells one. you how many rows each color is. Hmm. Because some rows may be wider than others. And also um, what the mini, mini she definitely colorway puts a lot of work She does. This, she puts a that. lot of work into it. So Brooke, do you want to open that one? I will. I don't know if I can, but I will. I can. I did it. Look at that. She's a pro. All right. All right, guys. This one is Space Cadet. I am so excited. I love this. I, I so bright. I'm in love. So we have this one, which is the you know the main the main. Let's put over mom's face. So it's got some gray stripes and then a pink stripe and then a rainbow like a section of rainbow fade stripes. It's so cool looking. All right, there's that, and then here's the pink that goes with it mm -hmm. over there, and there's them together. I like it because it looks like um, BB-8. <laughs> yeah. It's really cool and bright colored and funky. I love that. It'll be like, I like knitting bright colored stripes. It mm -hmm. just, you know, it's more fun. And All right, and my Amplifiber came in. Thank you, Erin. So I saw that she, okay, so before... This is the blush mohair. Brooke, do you want to show it? It's her blush mohair. I had seen this before. I knew I'm like, the next time I order, I'm going to grab that blush mohair. I think it's always good. Like, I have stash. I don't really have a lot of stash mohair. And sometimes you're like, I just need a skein of mohair or mm -hmm. some mohair. And this blush color would look great with, like, a whole lot of different Anything, colors. Yeah. yeah. And then I knew she was going to have a sock set. I saw her, like, little, in her story, she was dying up St. Patrick's Day, a sock set. So I'm like, I'm going to have to get one of those. She had a couple mm -hmm. different ones. This is the one I got, Brooke. That one is the Kiss Me I'm Irish sock set. I think she still has some of those in the shop still. Very Comes pretty. with two minis. So this pretty. one's like a pinky peach kind of. And this is gray. And this is like, a, oh my gosh, this green. I love this mm -hmm. green. And it is so soft. So this one is on her four ply merino sock fingering. Um, so it's 85% superwash merino wool, 15% nylon, and it is so plushy soft. Mm -hmm. And I only noticed the difference because my next sock set that I got is a different base. And so I just realized how soft and plush this one is. So this is Kiss Me I'm Irish set. Okay, and the next sock set is... This one is Spring Fling. Spring Fling. Oh my gosh, I could not resist. I love this purple and that blue. Yes, those colors. Definitely goes well with like all of this. I love that. Now you can see the difference. Let's just hold up the difference right here. So this is plushy. So you can see the twist difference, basically. So this one was a four ply merino sock fingering. This is a two ply Highland sock fingering. So while it's Highland wool, 80% superwash fine Highland wool, 20% polyamide, it is still soft. It just definitely feels a little bit more sturdy, 
I would say. However, still soft. So there's nothing like, it's nothing scratchy or itchy about it. It's just a little bit more sturdier. Like this is like super plush. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so excited. This, I already like have ideas. Like this one, I want to like do some kind of cute color work sock. Oh my gosh. I already have all these ideas I want to like do for this color work. And this one, I already know I'm just going to like, because it's this great variegated. I want to like add some stripiness in there or maybe just cuff toes and heels and then, I don't know. I don't know. It'll be something amazing. So here's what I got with my, and I use my sweet, sweet chick 15 discount guys through the end of March, sweet chick 15, 15% off. And she, and there's still some of these in the shop. I think these actually are all in the shop. Not this. <laughs> these I think are still in the shop. The other one that was the other St. Patrick's Day socks set, I think is sold out. I think, I don't know by the time you guys watch this, if this will all be still in there, but there is some great stuff in there still. She still has her super fan fave library magic, which I still have. And I think I'm actually going to cast on that mm -hmm. here pretty soon. Cause I love that colorway. Um, but she said she's gonna have another update. I don't know how that girl can do another update so quick. She's a machine. So look out for that. So I got my clubs ready to show you guys. So first up is my row one club. This is the carnival of C color yarn club. It is a club that I mean, comes in this bag. It is 10, 10 gram minis, all different colors, pre-wound from a different indie dyer each month. You also get a little bag of goodies. But this is a great way to have scraps for any kind of scrappy project, heels, toes, and cuffs, color work, and also to sample different indie dyers that you've been like looking for. I know, I mean, indie dyed yarn is expensive. So sometimes you're like, well, it looks good in the picture online on Instagram, but do I really want mm -hmm. that yarn? I don't know how it feels, how it, you know, works. So this is a great way to be able to sample some of that. Definitely. I was so excited when I opened it. I mean, I feel like row one is like, she's just like, Kim, what do you want me to have next month? Because last month was Threadhead Knits Co., one of my favorites. This month is Wool and Vinyl. I love Wool and Vinyl. I saw her, I believe, at, I think Shenandoah Fiber Festival, maybe. I think that's where I saw her. She has amazing pops of color. And all of her colorways are named after albums or song I think songs like rock songs or whatever but like this one is dreams I do kind of want to show all of them like really quickly right to the next one yep and we have Benny and the Jets I love that color pour some sugar on me I like that one too noise pollution that's an, um, one of her fate, like one of fan favorites on that one. The Heartbreakers, this is super bright. It's just as bright as it's showing. Like right there, that's like. Kickstart my heart. This is Blind Melon. Actually, it's a little blowing out, maybe closer. That's closer to the color. Back here, right here. Mm -hmm. Smells like teen spirit. I like that one. Still of the night. It's like a good charcoal gray total. And last, I love this Rocket one. Man. I love this one. Oh my goodness. It's so that's exactly how yeah, vibrant it is. It seriously. is so pretty. So I love wool and vinyl. I've yet to buy any of their yarn until this this little number came in. Basically, I think I found her at Shenandoah Fiber Festival when I'd already bought like a ton of yarn. <laughs> so I was trying not to. I was with my friend that she wanted to go in there and see. And it was one of those things where I'd already bought a lot. So I know I could maybe only buy like one thing. And I kept looking around and I loved everything. Like, mm -hmm. You know, when you're looking around, you don't, you can't pick anything because you just love it all. And you're like, well, I can't just buy one. So I'm just going to, I'm going to buy none. It's basically what yeah. it was. It was like, I already bought a lot. So I knew I couldn't buy a lot and I couldn't pick. And now I get a little sample, so I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, it also comes with a little bag of goodies. I'm gonna open it up. Inside each month comes with the paper that tells you all about the dyer and the um, names of the colorways and how to wash and what the base is and you know all that good stuff. And then it also comes with some treats. So I got a little candy, some little high chews, little high chew candies. And it comes with a stitch marker. I love this. I'm going to my show. This is like a little radio. A little boom box. Can I see? Cute. Can, I, can I see it? I don't know. There. Where is it down? There you go. Um, which is really great. Laura from, uh, from Row One Yarn. She, like, each one of these stitch markers is usually themed pretty closely to either 
the holiday that's coming up or like it's the season or the the indie dyer so like there was one that was like I think she's an Alaska one. I already forgot, but she's like an apple. Like she bases all of her colorway names on names of apples. Mm -hmm. So the stitch marker was like a little apple. Like oh, so, yeah. And this one, cute. like it's wool and vinyl. She has a little boom box. So they're all kind of like themed together. It's really, really thoughtful and really cute. Um, and I believe she has like a five dollar off code if you go for like first time if you want to get the get the the club. So go ahead and check it out. There's like a code on her Instagram and on her website, and you can go ahead and get it for at least the first month and try it out because that way it's only like. I, don't know, I think it's like thirty six ninety five a month, thirty four. I don't. I don't really know. Um, but like five bucks off, just try it for the first month and see if you like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I love it. I have tons of minis now, <laughs> but but I do a lot of scrappy projects and yeah. I like to pull in scraps. And I just love having just, and they're pre wound, which I, I know I'll mention. But like you don't have to wind these. You take off the tag and they're ready to go. It's really nice. Okay, my last club is Yarnable. So I got my Yarnable club in. Oh my gosh, I I keep them all in here. I I, I peek at it. Mm -hmm. And I put it away. So I'm like, oh, I really wanted to open it again. <laughs> so if you open up the box, there's the open the box. And it comes with the yarn in its own little container. And then you have your little goodies. I always look at the yarn first, right? Yeah. Some people do it the other way around. But I can't I can't wait. I have to do the yarn first. And we always, I always have Brooke guess. And I'm like, hey, Brooke, what colors do you think it's going to be? So we were trying to go I off of like. I always guess right. I always guess right. We were thinking it was going to be green because St. Patrick's Day. Something green. Yeah. Which there is green. So, this month's colorway for Yarnable Club is... Ta-da! So, technically, we're right. And why is this giving me peacock vibes? It does look a little peacocky, but you'll... So, what is the... This has got cursive again, but we already <laughs> talked about this. Celtic fairy. Yep. Celtic or Celtic mm, fairy. Isn't that pretty? Brooke, show My it. My job. What's My. the base on that? Oh, I'm base. The base. I don't know what about that base, but the um, eighty-five percent wash merino and fifteen percent nylon. Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and show it again. I All right. With you. I mean the the bright blues and it's even some gray, like this gray down here. That's a gray and that bright blues, bright greens. Love it. That's gonna be some really pretty socks. Mm -hmm. Like even like Dalen might like these socks or Dad. Or I mean I, I would think, love them. I think <laughs> maybe that's the I think that's Logan's color. Logan's my nephew, Logan. And it also comes with some goodies. So this month's I really loved. She comes with a little couple treats. So these are um, instant, instant tea. This is mango green tea. This is cold brew instant coffee vanilla dark roast. I can't wait to try these. They've been sitting here waiting for me to podcast. <laughs> and then um, this cute stitch marker I've been waiting to use. Brooke. Patrick's Day, Boiler Clover. And then it comes with this great uh, Week from Hell Hand Rescue Cream. Um, it's Walton Wood Farm. And this one's uh, the Grapefruit and Brown Sugar Formula. I would say a couple different like uses out of there. It's probably a lot in there. Looks really good. And I really like, oh, and it also comes with a little discount card, the little scratch off that you can use for that current month. I've already scratched mine off, so you can't look. Well, actually, I have Brooke. That's Brooke's fun thing. I'm like, hey, Brooke, scratch it off. Then I love this card. So you can scan this card that it comes with and it tells you all the information about all the different things that you get. But I really like this little did you know, this did you know section. Cause it always talks about something to do with the yarn name, color, something like I mm -hmm. learned very informational facts. Like the Christmas one was ribbon candy. Yeah. And it um, talked about like the history of ribbon candy. It was really cool. Huh. And so this one is, did you know, the earliest known St. Patrick's Day celebration was on March 17th, 1631. I did not know that. I mean, that was before me. Like, I wasn't alive yet. <laughs> so, yes. So those are all the goodies. I love this colorway. Oh my goodness, it's so bright. Yes. All right, moving on to Dream Knitting. Honestly, I wish I would knit another Muscle Bear Cat. Another one. So I don't know if it's Dream Knitting that I haven't knit before, but I want to re-knit that one. I still really want to knit that, I think it's um, Professor Meow mm -hmm. pullover shirt. So it's Knit Picks, it's a Knit Picks pattern and Knit Picks yarn, I mean you don't have to Knit Picks yarn, but I of course want to do it. It's like a uh, short sleeve pullover with a big shadow cat on it. Oh, yeah, gosh, we so talked cute. about one of our previous ones actually. Yes, so I keep looking, so I, I know what colors I want to use. I want to use the lavender for the shirt and mm -hmm. the dark, dark purple for the cat. Yeah. And those colors are always, whenever I look, they're always like, oh, up next, next month, remind me. So I actually clicked remind me this time 
with a, I think they'll send me an email when it's back in stock. So as soon as it's in stock, I just need to order it so I have it because I, I really want to wear and short sleeves. So it'd be good if I can, you yeah. know, I mean, I know how long it takes me to knit stuff. Maybe by like August. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll just see. We'll be good for like fall mm -hmm. around here because it's too humid to wear anything wool, even if it's short sleeve in the summertime. It's just too hot. It's too sticky. So it'd be a good fall mm -hmm. shirt anyways. Podcasts. I've actually found some great ones, guys. I actually had to narrow it down, so I'm gonna save a couple <laughs> for next mm -hmm. time. So I found so many good ones. Um, Rose Opal is a new to me one. Um, that's Erica and Daphne. They are a mother-in-law daughter-in-law duo. Yeah, it's very cute. And I, I I think they said they're up in Maine or somewhere up north, um, Delaware, Maine, I don't, somewhere north of me because we're in Virginia. Um, and they're really cute. You guys should check them out. Mm -hmm. They have a lot. They knit a lot. So I think they podcast every two weeks, but they always have such a lot of content. Well, I there's noticed. two of them who knit. True, but I, I do feel... Oh, and the mom, the, the mother-in-law, she um, cross-stitches a lot, too. So she's got some great cross-stitching. So I thought I was really cool with my cross-stitching, my basic kit. And then she's actually got, like... They're very, very involved. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah, no, my, mine looks very like fifth grader <laughs> basic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so funny. But it's really fun. So check them out. They're really sweet. Breaking Yarn. She's an indie dyer and she actually started her um, own podcast. It's really cute. Check her. I like her uh, setup background. Um, I think it's like in her like dye shop, dye studio, but it looks with, like her colors out. It's really cool looking. You guys check her out. It's really fun. You can see all of her new yarns that are up. And also, Piece for Piece Crafting. I'm going to list all these down below. He is hilarious. I found him from Happy Knits, and he is just so funny. His intro for the—I haven't watched his newest one, but the last one, his intro, I la I laughed the entire time. He's so funny, and he's got this thing about plants now. He's like my budget because he every time he walks by a plant shop, he has to buy all the plants. It's so funny. He's hilarious, and he's a great knitter and very good taste in yarn and colors, and he's just amazing. So check him out. He's really cool. Um, what are we watching, Brooke? What are we watching? Nothing. Um, we watched the new, um, Disney movie, Raya and the Last Dragon. I cried my eyes out. I don't know why. I ugly cried. Because it's... <sighs> it was so good. I loved it. The animation was on point. I loved, like, mm -hmm. the music in the background. The, it was just so beautiful. And it, it was definitely very funny. It was so funny. And the, the animals were so cute. Oh, my boy. Rick once... What's the little rolly name? I don't know what his name is, but, like, I keep forgetting. She says something. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's so cute. He's, like, this... He looks like... A, like a huge, like a roly poly. He's a roly poly. It's like a roly poly mixed with a hedgehog. He's so cute. I want one. Anyways, it's very, it's very girl power and yeah, very, it's it's so Cause all, cool. Because I like it because all of the so like the main well she's not really a villain she's like basically the um the protagonist the protagonist the protagonist and then there the other person doesn't really work for her but it took me a while to get the protagonist <laughs> but Raya's protagonist and it's very. Um, I like it because they also have different races. Like, there's not a single white person. It's very diverse. There's not really a I I don't... There's, like, there's really no white people in there. No. I like it. It's very diverse. And it's very girl powering. The only guys that are there are side characters. Um, but it's mainly just girls and I love it. Yeah. The girls kick booty. I... And the dragon's really cute. Oh, the dragon. Who is it? And, uh, Aquafina. I... Voices the dragon. Oh. She's so funny. I was like, I know her. She's in Crazy Rich Asians. I yeah, love her. Oh my I gosh. love that movie. She, she's hilarious in that movie as well. Um, you have to watch it. Now, it is premiere early access, I think, on Disney Plus, so you do have to buy it. But we're like a big Disney cartoon mm -hmm. family, and my son is at college, and he might even watch it too. So I we, we like to try and buy them just so we can have them or we watch them. Um, and plus, Daylin needs something to watch sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he'll watch it in front of... Actually, he probably would. He probably would. He watched all the Batman comics right now. He watched Coco with his roommates. Oh, did he? Yes. <laughs> They're at a military college, too. That's really funny. <laughs> and then they, they were watching, like, Fast and Furious or something, and Daniel was like, I'm going to go over here, and he watched Coco again. <laughs> That's so funny. That's good, though. Yeah, so we watched that, and I and cried also, a lot. Also, we watched... What's it called? Um, Wally's Wonderland. Oh my, no, Willy's. Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland. Oh my god, that was insane. Okay, so basically, you're, it's still for, if you go on Amazon Prime or something, it's still basically rent for 20 bucks. You have to rent for 20 bucks. But the thing is, we, we're probably not going to rewatch it. It was freaky. It was like. <laughs> I mean, I'm a big horror movie fan. I'm, okay, only reason I watched it is because it was kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's thing, and I'm obsessed with like the lore, like anything, anything anytime there's lore, I'm just obsessed, mm. like I dive in. 
Um, I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan, so Nicolas he's Cage in it. He doesn't even talk. He doesn't talk, but he's so good. <laughs> but yeah, Nicolas Cage is really good. So if you like animatronics trying to kill you, I guess. Possessed it's, by it's like killers. It's so close to Five Nights at Freddy's, I mean. The thing is, like, the, you, you don't even know the main character's name. Like, literally, if you look up the cast, look up the characters, he's just referred to as the janitor. He's the janitor, even though he's only the janitor for that one night. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. It, you, I, it's a really good movie. Yeah, it's so good. And actually, a couple of the scenes... Because the movie was made by, it's like directed, produced, and written by this one guy, and he's never done anything before. And when he did it, he, one of the scenes that's actually in the movie was filmed in his garage. It was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool movie. It's, you know, it's fun to watch, and I liked it. I was actually surprised. Brooke only, she's not a big, no one else is really big scary movie fans. Brooke will watch some with me. I'll, I'll typically watch scary movies with you, unless it's like not, if it's like a... My son couldn't be paid to watch a horror movie with me. My husband will watch some, but mainly because I want to watch them. But he'll yeah. only watch some. He won't watch. There's certain ones he won't watch. He doesn't like animatronics. He did not he would want... not want anything possessing it, like any kind of animatronics. He doesn't I love like that. anything with mirrors. <laughs> He's a weird mirror thing, <laughs> I know. And I think that's it. He doesn't like anything. Like... He doesn't like the ghost, the ghostly ones, I which lo- are my I, favorite ones. I like the ghost ones. I I. Yeah, but if there's any animals in it, I don't. Like, Pet Cemetery. I watched it, and I was like, oh, it looks good. Like, no one dies. Well, I mean the pets. Everyone died. <laughs> Everyone died. Oh, well, it's Pet Cemetery. <laughs> Everyone died. And I thought, oh, you know, like, maybe, maybe it's like this cool cat. Every time someone died, I'm like, oh, I guess they died. <laughs> I, I know. know. Mom, was, Mom was like, he doesn't die. No, 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 she doesn't die either. No, no. They- <laughs> Oops. That's horror movies for you. I know. And then, like, I watch a horror movie, and, like, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be great. Good ending. And then... It, they're never good. You think they're going to end well. That's why I try to teach them. I'm like, it's not going to end well. It looks like it's going to end well. Just wait two more minutes. <laughs> it's going to ruin everything. So then I always just be like, that part didn't happen. Like, I pull a Phoebe. The end. The end. <laughs> Phoebe from Friends. <laughs> what, else, what are we reading? Um, I'm reading um, Love and Other Detours by a person. Um, basically. I'll put it below. <laughs> then, um... It's about, it has two books in one. It's Love and Gelato and Love and Luck. One takes place in Italy and the other takes place in Ireland. Mm. Basically, she just goes to Italy on a interesting occasion. And the next book, uh, Love and Luck, is about her best friend actually going to Ireland. That's not like great location. Does it, does it describe like, the mm-hmm. scenery and stuff? Oh, I want to travel again. Oh my goodness. I want to go to Italy and Ireland. I want to go to all those places. Well, so we promise our son... Each kid gets a trip of their choosing as a graduation present from high school. So Dalen, we already knew his uh, request was Italy, and then he graduated during the pandemic. <laughs> so not that we knew we weren't going to go last year anyways. We were going to go the next year because we, we – to plan a trip like that because we wanted to, like, travel all around, um, we wanted to get, like, more time to prepare for it. So we knew it wouldn't be till probably this year, but it's not going to happen this year either. So um, I want to go to Ireland. You want to, is yours going to be Ireland? Ireland. Brooke's got another four. She's a freshman in high school. My son is a freshman in college. And so they all get to have their trips. And I actually had a girls trip planned with my BFF from high school. To and we're both dinner. knitters. And we were going to go to Spain for a week. Oh, my gosh. And it was going to be my first time over in Europe. I was be, I was so excited. And it was, like, basically right when the pandemic hit. It was, like, end of March. Mm-hmm. And everything shut down. It was like, oh. And we knew. Because we were going to cancel it beforehand because we didn't want to get stuck anywhere. And then they ended up starting down everything down anyways. But it's fine, because we'll go to other places. Yes. We're, we're planning a beach trip this We summer. are. So that's actually what's really exciting. So you know during the pandemic, you do whatever you can to like feel better. I got a Peloton bike. We're, we're looking, we're planning things to look forward to. We're actually going to rent a beach house. We don't know where yet, because we're on the eastern shore though. We can go almost anywhere over here. Mm-hmm. Um, and we haven't actually been to the eastern shore Mm-mm. at all. Yeah. And we've lived here for like quite a few years. <laughs> so we haven't gone. So we're all trying to... Like, look at beach houses, and I don't want anything super touristy. I want to stay away from people. I just basically want to get groceries, stay in a beach house, live on the beach for a week, and relax. That's basically all mm-hmm. I want to do. Um, and so we're having fun trying to plan that, pick where we want to go. And actually, I gave my two, teen- two teenagers an option. I said, you know, beach or mountains, because we're, like, right, we're in Virginia, so we have the mountains have right mountains. next to us. Um, I was kind of hoping for, I'm a mountain girl. I can't do beaches for too long because red hair, I fry. Like, I fry. Like, I'll put on sunblock every 20 minutes and I still fry. Especially here. Um, but. Dale and I don't. They, uh, obviously, they got their, um, dad's Italian olive skin. <laughs> so, they just get really dark and I have to keep, you know. 
I might not red. look olive skinned once the sun comes out. I it's ridiculous. Just, I'm, just, I'm just so jealous. I mean, like I I'm will not, tan. I'm out, I'm out there for five minutes and yeah. I'm like, all right, mom, hey, and I have like my my tan lines. I know. I will tan, but I burn first, so I have to pay for it. I have to pay for my tans. But um, so I my I'm when we rent our beach house, I want to make sure that it's right on the beach, which is kind of hard. So I want one. We right do on the have beach. ones. We do have ones that were narrowing down yeah. at the point. Because I want to be able to sit on the patio and watch and Dale watch and I, them on the beach. Watch Dale and I slow motion run into the water <laughs> as the waves be crash close. into not too us. Close. Like I just want to be able to see them but not have to be out there and frying. It's, it's but I also want to like lay outside just to get like a nice tan, just like relax. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, so we gave them the choice between beach and house. Of course, my two teenagers teenagers chose beach. Of course. I was okay with either, actually, but I preferred beach. Brooke was, I was like, like, I just want to go somewhere. I, know, I was like, <laughs> I, I can't where I go. No, because, like, my friends are like, oh, I'm going to the beach. I'm going to, like, I'm going across the country mm-hmm. to my family. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm just, you know, here. <laughs> we don't do anything. I'm, we're, we're I, trying I, to stay honestly, safe. I just want to go somewhere. And then Dan was like, I want to go to beach. And I'm like, okay, like, I would prefer a beach. Yeah. But, like, if you guys want to go to the mountains, they'll be like, whoa, mountains. Yeah, so we're, we're looking. It's just fun to plan. You guys know how it is. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's fun to plan. It's very, you know, it's helpful for our moods and our. Yeah morale and stuff like that so that's it uh don't forget if you liked what you saw and you want to be notified when we post our next podcast which is usually around every two weeks sometimes sooner but no later than two weeks watch i say that now i just jinxed mm-hmm. myself <laughs> watch something happen i know but um go ahead and click subscribe and then hit the little bell and then hit you know little bell ding 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 and that will let you know like hey Sweet Pea Chickadee upload the new podcast. If you want. If you want. It'd be really nice. We like it. Um, and go ahead and follow me on Instagram once again at Sweet Pea and Chickadee. And follow me on Ravelry. Check out my project pages. Be my Ravelry friend. Uh, at Armini. It's my first initial last name. And we also have our email. Like I said before, it's Sweet Pea and Chickadee at Yahoo.com. Super easy. Um, if you have any questions or if I didn't, I try and link everything below. But if I miss something and you want to know, just go ahead and send me an email. I'll send, I'll email you back. Yeah, and feel free to comment what your favorite part is oh about the podcast. Comment below. We love it when you guys comment. I love interacting with, like, about knitting and mm-hmm. anything. So just comment below. I, I always, you know, we're a small podcast, so I always respond back. And yeah. No matter what. So, we love it. Yeah, so uh, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you yeah. next time. Okay, bye. Bye.